Yo, what is up? This is Joshua Casper, and today I'm going to show you my default um, template settings for my um, projects inside of Ableton. Um, I did a brief tutorial on this before about how to go about saving your default template, and that's over here in Options, Preferences, uh, File Folder, Save Current Set as Default, and you hit that Save button once you've, you've done everything you want to do. But I didn't really show you um, what I do or, you know, or a good way to go about it and kind of explain why um, having a nice default is, is the way to go. Um, music sometimes can come to you in this kind of fit of energy and it's just, it just hits you and you're like, God, I got to get to it, I got to do it now. And especially if you're thinking about the lead and how the bass might play with the lead and the melody, uh, you getting it down and into your computer is very important and doing it quickly before you forget or start to get uh, distracted is, is super important. So... Um, there's just a bunch of steps that you can do to make sure you're ready to go. So if I open up Ableton, this is what I'll see. And I've already got, for instance, a simple, simple drum pattern set up. I've got uh, just a simple, simple sub hit ready to go. It's already being side-chained, so I don't have to go. And I mean, for the longest time, I was making a, a MIDI channel. Then I was making a MIDI clip. And then I was inputting, uh, inputting some subline, and then I was grouping it, and then putting it in the compressor, and then having to side chain it, hit the EQ, sort out the EQ, then adjust some of these perimeters, like the threshold and the attack and stuff. But now I don't have to do any of that. And doing that doesn't take forever, but it certainly takes more time than it should if I can just set it up to begin with and have it ready to go every time. Um, inside my drum rack, it's just, um, I group everything according to drums, sub, mid bass, lead pads, FX. Um, there will inevitably be, inevitably, inevitably be, uh, more groups later, but this is just my bass. Um, inside my drums here, I don't have anything on the group, but, um, there probably will be some stuff there later, but on the group drum track here, if I just go ahead and solo this. That's all it is right now. And that, that, I mean, that is super cheesy. I would never put out anything like that. Although there are plenty of top songs with just that type of pattern. Um, inside here, I've just got some sample pack stuff from Calvatron's sample pack. And um, on the kick here, on the kick he has, what I did was just drag this EQ8 on it and just totally high pass it out. So I cut all this low end because I've just found this plugin called the Bassism, and um, this makes kicks super quick, and you can tune your kick by hitting this little button. So uh, I'm going to do a tutorial on this. My next tutorial will be on this specifically, but. Now my project is ready to go, and not only is my drum pattern ready, but if, if there's a certain key that I'm going to be doing the song in, I can, in, I can tune the kick drum, the bass drum, to the, the key of the song, which I just, I mean, it's just great to have that ready to go. And it's super cool that inside the drum rack I can drop a VST, which is so cool. And I just got a couple more, a couple more samples in there, but that's all that is inside of there. The sub, like I said, I've already got the compressor side-chained to the low frequencies of my drum output, and it's side-chained to the um, drum rack. I might put some percussion in there, and unless it's going to be some very low-end percussion, it shouldn't mess too much with the, um, the sub bass, and I'll do some EQing and stuff. But again, this is just so I can get things started very quickly. Um, and then on the next, the mids, the leads, the pads, and the effects, I don't have, they're just empty MIDI channels in here because I never know what I'm going to do, where I'm going to get my pad sounds. For instance, am I going to use massive? Am I going to use si silent? Am I going to use, uh, I just picked up uh, razor. I don't know what I'm going to be using in here, so I leave them empty. But that's just the process of dropping in them, dropping a VSTI on here and running it. Um, some other things. I have two return tracks. I've got the Ableton ping pong delay, pretty much more or less 
um, this, the way it comes is the stock default. I, I think I turned up the dry white a little bit. Uh, and then the, the Ambience VST, free VST plugin. If you don't have this, go grab it. I love it. And I've got that dropped in on a second return track. So just two return tracks to get started. And then the master channel. Um, I've got the glue compressor preset for catch peaks. I think I pulled up the makeup a little bit to about two uh, plus two dB. And I have just um, a mid-side EQ8 after that. And I'm just cutting off the side sub area and kind of gently boosting the side um, high end. And then I use the TLS maximizer. And I only use this for while I'm producing um, the track. I will use ozone later on after I've got my idea and everything is solid and I export my stems for the mix down and stuff like that. But this is really lightweight and does a really great job. So um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. I know that's nothing earth shattering, but if you don't, if you're not working with the default preset template, I suggest you do it. I mean, it's just so much easier. I mean, I'm going to do all this anyway, and why should I have to repeat that process if I can just set it all up? So uh, I hope that helps you guys, and um, come back later because the next tutorial will be on this bassism machine, which is just fantastic. But anyway, we'll see you next time.